Hello again, Haskell folks. It's nice to see you all. Today we're going to be learning together about type families. Although I think the title of this video is going to be a bit clickbaity because I actually already sort of know type families. But um, we're going to do some exercises regarding type families for those of you who are maybe not familiar with it. And hopefully it will be self-explanatory and something useful that you might use. So for doing so, we're going to use this uh, famous Haskell repo, Haskell Exercises by I am Tom, great guy. And we're going to, in particular, to be doing the exercises about type families on the folder number six. So how these exercises go, they first have like a very nice module in Haskell with code that is self-explained uh, using comments. And then it has an exercises file in the same folder that contains some exercises for us to go through to check our understanding. So let's begin and I hope you enjoy the video. So today's module will be a very brief introduction to type families and their uses. We're not going to go where Exomjor, very interesting guy as well, I, I will link to his Twitter in the description, talk went, so there is plenty of further reading to be done if you're interested. So we import the type from data kind module and we define the natural numbers. We are hopefully all aware of value level functions, uh, hopefully. <laughs> So here's how we add two natural numbers using value level functions in Haskell. And type families, by their simplest definition, are functions at the type level. Okay, so wait a moment, this is quite mind blowing here because obviously we are familiar with uh, functions at the value level, but what is a function at the type level? Well, I don't know if this is something unique to Haskell, but it's kind of crazy. And we're going to be coding some examples together, so hopefully it will be made clear. In case you're wondering, the type families extensions, of course, this is one, of, one extension of the JHC Haskell compiler, implies also using the kind signature extension. Okay, so now we have our first example of a type family, and you can compare it with the value label as well. The syntax is a bit funny, but hopefully the symmetry is obvious. We specify the parameters in the first line, this one, as well as the return type, which is this one. And then we write equations on the subsequent line. Technically, this is a closed type family because there are open type families and closed type families. We specify all equations up front like a value level function. In this case, these two options. There are also open type families which behave more like type classes in which you need to implement the um, implementation instance, so to speak, of each type family. But we won't, pe we won't be paying them too much attention. So here's an example of a type family that is open. And then you provide the instances as you would with a type class. They can be in other modules, other files maybe, but you get the idea. So why would this be useful? Well, let's save the fun examples for the exercises that we're going to go through together. As most of these are pretty intuitive, but let's pick, some ni let's pick a nice easy one. A while ago, we talked about singleton Boolean types, in which we define Booleans at the type level. What if we wanted to flip the Boolean value? What would the type signature be? As well as the value level not, we'd need a type level equivalent to match. So we can define the type level equivalent of the not value level function in the type level. We can define it quite nicely with the following type family. We have not, which receives a parameter of type bool and returns a bool, again, all of this at the type level. So if it was the previous value was true, now it's false, and if it's false, now it's going to be true. Now we can write the function in its type signature. So this is where things uh, get interesting. The input type determines what the output will be, and the type family will be evaluated for each pattern match in our function. That's all there is to it, like it's nothing. One last thing that may be of interest, type families don't necessarily have to be total. Interesting. So we define the following substract uh, type family, and then Substract subtracts the second value from the first, the y from the x, so to speak. However, it doesn't deal with the possibility that the second value is bigger than the first, because we don't have a way of representing negative numbers. So what happens when we get it wrong? Well, now it proceeds to load it in JCI and it tests it with the colon kind type. So this is interesting because we're going to need it later. The colon kind command will tell us the kind of an extension but the kind exclamation, colon kind exclamation command will tell us the normalized or simplified form of the type. In our case, this means evaluating the type families as far as we can. So this is the command that we're going to be using to check 
their type families work correctly. If we can find an equation that matches our call to a type family, we can reduce the expression and it stays how it is. That's why um, subtracting by a bigger number just does nothing. Interesting? This is part due to things like open type families. We might work out how to reduce the type family later on, so we can definitely say it's an error for now. In this particular case, we say our expression is stuck. It cannot reduce further. We are not going to go into further detail about what this means, but talk to Songer, great guy again, if you're interested in the ways you can misuse this. Okay, so we are not interested for now in misusing Haskell, we just want to learn what a type family is. So let's go ahead to the exercises. Okay, and here we have a little extra text that is going to be also super interesting. Before we get started, let's talk about type operators, another Haskell extension. All this does is allow us to write types whose names are operators and write regular names as infix names with the backticks, as we would at the value level. Basically, type operators let us write type families, but in an operator fashion, and we're going to do that right now. So the first exercise, number one, is using type operators extension rewrite add, the type family that we defined before, with the name plus. Great, so as a reference, we're going to have here our app function. And now we're going to proceed and create the type family plus, which receives an X and a Y and returns a NAT where. And now we define when we add something that's empty to something else, we're going to return that something else because adding by zero doesn't add anything. And if we are going to add some number to another number, then we need to actually add it, x plus y. So here you see clearly now the resemblance between this example and this example. We have satisfactorily write our first type family using a type operator fashion. So now let's open this up in GHCI and see if we did something correct. Great, and we're going to load the exercises. Beautiful. If we add one value level that is S of Z to one that is represents the value two, we should have a kind that returns three in the natural numbers. Nice, illegal operators, enable type operators. Well, we got a warning about this, so now we need to enable this extension, operators, and now it complains again that we need to enable data counts. And now our expression can be computed, and as you see, our plus operator for type families is working. We're adding one plus two, and it returns three. Neat. So let's go for the next example. Write a type family asterisk asterisk that multiplies two naturals using our previously defined plus. Which extension are you being told to enable and why? Okay, so I think this new snat data type belongs to the next question. And here we're going to define type family multiplication and that again takes two natural numbers and outputs a third one and here we need to think um, if we multiply a number by zero what do we get well we get a zero nice but if we get a number how are we going to solve this well if you remember if you go back to your days at school they might teach you that multiplication is just addition n number of times. Let's say, for example, if you are calculating two times three, then you need to sum two three times. So we are summing whatever is inside of our natural number to what? Well, now recursively, we need to call the multiplication for our y function. And I'm matching wrongly the pattern here. And it says, now we get a warning from GHC saying that we cannot use this type application and that we should use undecidable instances for this. We add it, it gets nicely added automatically for us. Thanks, Visual Studio Code. We reload and now we can check if our multiplying type family works correctly. So we're going to say again kind and we're going to multiply two by three we get that multiplying two for three gets one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice, so we're nicely multiplying now this. Now we need to write a function to add two snat values. Okay, so let's call it add, and we're going to take 
one as net value, so hard to type, and another one, and we're going to return a third one with the values of a plus b. Great, so now we handle the zero case, and we say that in case the first number is zero, we're just going to return that number, and in the case that we get this, with a number here and a number here, if you remember our adding function, it's basically the same. Now we need to define that we're going to append this and say we're going to add it using exactly the same function. Nice, so this was easy. Let's go now for exercise number two. We have a vector defined at the type level, which contains the count and the type that it's containing the vector. And we have the empty constructor and the empty vector and the consign operator. So now, write a function that appends two vectors together. What would the size of the vector be? Well, since we have in the type signatures the size here as the first parameter, we can say that the resulting vector is going to be m plus n size. And now we can go ahead and define the pen. So if the first vector is empty, we're going to return the second vector. And if the first vector is not empty, we're going to call cons with the first element and then call recursively again, append with the x's and the y's. Beautiful. So if we load everything in GXC, everything is compiling and everything works. And now let's do this final exercise. Write flat map function that takes a vector of n of a and a function a to the vector of n of b and produces a list that is the concatenation of this result. This could end up being a deceptive job. So here we have the type signature and we need to think. So we have our custom made flat map that takes the, ve the vector and the function that we're going to do and which is going to be the size of this producing vector. Well, it's going to be the multiplication of all the possible n's by the possible n, the product. And how can we do this on the type level? Well, thanks to us, we define uh, this as a title operator and we're going to use it quite nicely here. And now we can just proceed with the implementation of flat. So in the case the, the vector we received is empty, we ignore the function and we're going to return an empty vector. And in the case we have something, x axis and we use f, we are going to first apply this function to the first element and now what? Now we need to recursively proceed flat mapping the rest of the x's but we already have a vector here. So how can we join one vector with another? Well, uh, also luckily, but not really, we define the append operation for So now we can call just the rest of the flat map with, with the x's here and the f following. And now everything compiles and this all makes sense. Great. So this exercise is actually quite long. It has nine exercises uh, featuring different uh, things about type families. But if you enjoyed the video, uh, please click like, hit subscribe. And if you want me to continue this series and to finalize all the exercises, please tell me and I will make maybe another Haskell video working with more complex type families. So thanks for watching and until next time.